Here's what was originally supporting your gate. A little piece of re-rod tucked into about eight inches of concrete. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be your new post. We are actually gonna take this five by five pressure treated post and bury it about 30 inches in the ground. Now to do that, we have to dig a hole. Okay. A lot of people would use a regular pointed shovel to dig the hole. And you can a little bit in the top, but once you start getting down deep, you have to widen that hole way up so you're actually making more work for yourself. So what I like to use are these post hole diggers. Very simple operation, you drive it in the ground, you open them up, you take whatever you get and toss it to the side. Okay, now you drive it in, you wanna be careful, you don't ever want your hands to be in between like that. If your hands are like this and you close this blade, you're just gonna crush your hands together. You all ready? I am. There you go. All right, great. The most important part is that initial plunge, getting it down as far as you can. So you really want to take and sink it in, okay? Okay. You can see how much I get out of that. Oh, yeah. Courtney, sooner or later, you're bound to hit something, a rock, a brick, it could be anything at all. So what I do then is I use an iron bar. That's kind of loose, let's see what we got. Looks like an old brick or a piece of concrete. All right, Courtney, let me take a couple measurements here. Now, the first thing I wanted is I want the top of the post to be 36 inches above grade. So I measured up and I put a mark right here. Now, I know my post is 71 inches long. So when I drop my tape in here, right now, our bottom of our hole measures 70 inches. We want to be 71. I have to go down one more inch. Now, rather than have you dig out any more, I'm going to take this bar, which is called a tamping bar, and it has this round medallion on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put it in the hole and pack everything down. And it should take it down to the grade we want, but it's also going to pack this material so that the post won't sink at all. All right, I think that's all set. I'm going to lay that down and take the post. First thing you're gonna have to do is grab the four foot level for me. Mm -hmm. Now that's perfect on our mark. Now put the level right on the front of this. Okay, take it off, come on to the front. Nice, grab the shovel. Just take and start putting a little bit of soil in here. I'm gonna have you put in four to six inches and then I'm gonna pack it down. So just dirt strong enough to hold the post? No, we're just using it to really plumb up the post and then we're gonna surround it with concrete and it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, we're ready to mix the concrete. We're getting there. Great. What I want you to do is make a little hole in the middle right here. Just take it and fan it out. Okay. I'm gonna pour water in there and you're just gonna start mixing it together. Okay, easy enough. We're not gonna use too much water. I don't want it to be a sloppy mix. We want it to be a really stiff mix. And the other thing to remember, this is fast setting concrete, so we don't have a lot of time once we mix it up. Go girl, faster. <laughs> Keep that hole in the middle so that it drains to the middle. All right, let's get that concrete in the hole. Gotta remember to fill all the way around it evenly, okay? Just gonna use this wooden stake to make sure it's packed and all the way around the post. I want to fill the hole up until the concrete's three inches below grade. The ground drops off going over to the second post. We have to use a board and a level to make sure the two tops are at the same height. We'll plumb up the post and then we'll use a spacer to give us the exact measurement we need for our new gate. All right, Courtney, here's one part of your new gate. Now you look at this, this is all cedar. You have a lot of options with cedar. You can paint it, you can stain it, you can let it go natural and it's all gray. But the most important part of a gate is in the back. Take a look here. Look how beefy the back of this gate is. You got two by four top and bottom rails, two by three side rails, and a two by three cross member. This is gonna keep that gate from racking. Now. You had a special sized opening, so I had to have my fence guy, Mike McLaughlin, make up this fence for us. But if it's a good home on a tip, you can go to a fence company and say, I have an opening and they'll make you the gate and you can install it yourself. Okay, this looks great. Now we can take and lay this one down. 
What we have to do now is put on the hinges. So you see I can lay them out so they're in the center of this two by four rail, mm -hmm. pre-drill the holes, and now I'm just gonna lag them in place. The reason we pre-drill these holes in the hinges is we don't wanna take a chance on splitting the rail. We're putting in a really heavy lag screw in here to hold this gate to the hinges. Now we're ready to hang the gate. I've got a reference mark right here, and that's gonna be where my top rail is. I've pre-drilled some holes so I can put in these big lag screws. And what I want you to do is come over here. I'm gonna, we're gonna lift up on this. I'm gonna come up to the mark. All right, how's it looking? You lined up pretty good? Yep, looks good. Okay, the latch is all in place. Go ahead and try it. Oh, this is great. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. And look at this. We have a drop rod that you simply lift up and lock in place, and then this side opens also. Awesome.